Hey guys, it's Ginger here, starting my first official video where I actually get to talk about artificial intelligence and that kind of shit. So let's just get right into it, I guess. A little nervous, but you know, it's my first video, so hopefully that nervous feeling will go away soon, I hope. But anyway, barring that, um, just a quick disclaimer for everybody, I'm not any kind of scientist, I'm not studying any kind of robotics or artificial intelligence or anything like that. Um, everything you're going to see here is basically just me um, and my theories and my opinions about like robot, uh, <coughs> excuse me, robotics and artificial intelligence and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, um, I don't really research this kind of stuff, it's just like I said, thoughts and opinions, so don't be too hard on me, I guess, if I say something you disagree with. Um, also, I am recording from my phone because it's the best camera that I have right now. So you might see it move around a little bit if I switch hands trying to hold it correctly. But anyway, aside from that, uh, let's just go ahead and get into it, I guess. Um, so tonight I watched um, the movie The Lazarus Effect. Um, so spoilers, I guess, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, um, but if you have seen it or if you don't care about seeing it or you don't care about spoilers or, you know, whatever, I guess, um, you know, I'm not going to be saying too much spoilers, I guess, about it, but just in case, you know, if you don't want to spoil it, just don't watch the video, I guess, which sucks to say, like, because I do, I do want guys, you guys to watch my videos and get views and everything, but, you know, we can deal with that another time. Anyway, so... And no, this is not a movie review either, just to let everyone know. I'm just taking some ideas from the movie and theorizing them. Okay, anyway. So, um, in the movie, it's like, you know, they have a special serum that can bring people, animals, stuff like that back to life, right? And um, I was thinking about it. And it's like, you know, if you could do that, if you could bring, you know, either a beloved pet or, you know, um, a close friend or relative back to life who had passed away, would you do that? And as I was thinking about it, um, moving around my camera, sorry. Um, I was thinking that personally myself, um, I wouldn't do that myself. I believe that it's necessary um, to grieve for people. And, you know, if you have more people still living than maybe nature intended, while also more people are being born to populate the earth, then, you know, what kind of ramifications would that have for our earth and our ecosystem and our society? So, like, I guess if you look at it this way, you take, um, like, 100 people, right? And every year maybe 20 die and are replaced by another 20 being born, let's just say. Then, you know, that's the normal influx of people and that's the normal yearly amount. And that's how the ecosystem, I can't talk, that's how the ecosystem works, I guess, everything like that. But if you take away those 20 people that have died, you know, and they remain alive through, you know, this special serum that they're bringing back to life, and they don't actually pass on, then you're going to have 20 more people being born than maybe the ecosystem can handle. Now, it doesn't sound too bad if it's like, oh, out of 100, not 20, but, you know, if you think about it, like, out of the whole of the earth, you know, if this did ever become a big thing that people could do in the future and you know you take into account all the what is it seven billion people that we have on the earth how many die you know even on a daily basis and how many are born on a daily basis as well you know eventually if you continue to keep people alive that would have passed on otherwise then you know it's a possibility that food runs out or water runs out or space runs out or you know housing you know everything like that so my theory was you know why choose to do that when it could be harming the ecosystem like I know you know you have someone that you care about or you know a pet that you have always loved or you know something like that and you know you wish they'll never die but you know that is a cycle of life so it's like you know why would you do that would you do that honestly me myself I wouldn't I do know people however that would and they would choose to go ahead and bring back a pet or bring back a person that they cared about just because, you know, they love them so much. And it's like, is that really going to help you if you bring them back? You know, you might get a little more time with that person. Let's just, you know, continue talking about people. I don't want to keep saying the whole animals thing, etc. But, you know, if you keep this person around, 
then, you know, let's say it extends their life for a year. And yeah, that's another year that you get to spend with them, which is great. But knowing that that end is coming as well, wouldn't that harm you? It might make you feel worse inside if you knew that, like, they were going to die, you know, within the year after you use the serum. But if you, you know, maybe you had the serum for a longer period of time, or after that year, you could decide to keep them going still. And, you know, if you make that decision over and over again, like, oh, this person's going to die, so I'm going to keep them alive every year. And, you know, you're spending however much money or, you know, whatever it would cost for you to do that. You know, how far is too far? How long is too long? You know, if you do it enough, they could outlive you, right? And then who else is going to bring them back after you die? Or who's going to bring you back? Maybe they wouldn't choose to do that for you, even though you did spend all this time bringing them back as well. You know, so it's really an ethical question of like, would you do it and why? And, you know, how long would you do it for? And, you know, how would you handle that? Uh, myself, I don't think I could handle that. Like, I prefer to just go through the grieving process and, you know, cut it off there. I don't believe that it's my job to be like, oh, you know, this person could continue to live or this person should die. You know, that's not what I believe is my choice or my right to choose for something, for, excuse me, for someone else. So, myself, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, maybe you would. And if you would, like, I think you have to consider the ethical possibility of, like, maybe you're harming that person as well. You know, if you bring them back at the age that they were when they died, like, let's say they were, you know, 90 years old, and your body deteriorates with age over time, regardless of your when you're going to die or live, you know. So if you only bring them back when they're 90, you know, and you want to keep them alive, is it really the right choice for them? You know, what if they had a, con a condition like arth arthritis or something, and they were in pain, like, all the time? And it's like, yeah, I want another year with them, but they're going to suffer through that year because you're bringing them back at the same age that they were in. And in a way, that's kind of selfish, you know, because you want to spend the time with them. You're not doing it for them so that they can live a long life. You know, they've already lived a long time and they're suffering and maybe they don't want to be here anymore. Or maybe they do, you know, I don't know their life, but, you know, it's more, I think it's more selfish to be like, oh, I want more time with you. So I don't care that, you know, you were suffering, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, a little cough. So you know, it's like, I don't care that you were suffering or that bringing you back could con make you continue suffering if you want that time with them. But at the same time, you know, there are people that would be like, yeah, it's like, you know, I lost my parent or my best friend or, you know, whoever. And it's like, you know, what would you give up to continue on with them? You know, parents who have lost children, of course, they would do anything to keep their child around for a lot longer. And does age make a difference of why you would do that? You know, maybe if someone was five years old instead of 95 years old, then, you know, reasonably they live a long time, right? So maybe you'd want to go ahead and continue with them for a long time and you'd want to give them that life. But, you know, you never know what would happen in the end. So personally, myself, I wouldn't choose to do that. It's not my, not my uh, decision to make, you know. I mean, I guess it's harder to say it now, like, on video, talk, talking to YouTube, like, by myself, trying to say, like, oh, I wouldn't do that, you know, I, I've never been in that situation, you know, I don't, you know, there's nothing that can bring people back from the dead now, so maybe in a different, different life or a different position, I would choose to do that, but as far as I can say right now, no, I wouldn't, and, um, I guess that's case closed, I mean, I've just been babbling about that for about nine minutes, Would so I guess it's good time to end that discussion there I suppose um, anyway so um, if you feel differently please go ahead and comment because I would love to you know hear from you guys and read what other people think about this because I don't want this just be me babbling in front of a camera for however long about you know all of this theoretical stuff you know I want to hear from you guys I want other opinions and points of view and everything like that and um, yeah so I guess that's it um, so please comment if you feel differently or if you you know have a theoretical discussion topic, I guess, or a question that maybe you'd want to see discussed um, at further length. Um, hopefully the next time that I make a video like this, I'll have a better topic to go ahead and talk about at length, and um, hopefully it won't just be me awkwardly talking about my own feelings at the time. Maybe I can do something else for something different. I don't know. I can't talk. It's really late right now. It's like two in the morning and I'm just making a video because I have nothing better to do because I have insomnia. 
So, um, please comment. Um, anything you want to say, I do, or rather, I will be reading all of the comments. So anything you feel like sharing with me, or you want to just put out there, go ahead and uh, write it down. And I will read it, and if I have a chance, um, I'll go ahead and reply to you, or I'll discuss it, whatever it may be, if it's interesting, at length in another video. And um, hopefully this will be the first in a very long list of videos that I get to make where I get to talk to you guys, and I get to explore these kinds of discussions. So I hope you like this little first video, this little interesting hopefully interesting chat that we've been able to have here today and I need to focus my camera so other than that I have nothing more to say so thank you guys for watching this and for supporting me it does mean a lot to me you know now that I'm just starting out and trying to get things going on this and until I see you all again stay humanoid